The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. Turn this thing around Gotta turn it around Gotta turn it around Gotta turn it around I'm calling on the name That changes everything Yes Gotta turn it around Gotta turn it around Gotta turn it around all of my hope is in the name, the name of Jesus. Breakthrough will come, come in the name, the name of Jesus. I pray God come, turn this thing around. God turn. Turn it around, God, turn it around. Call it on the name, it changes everything. Yeah. God, turn it around, God, turn it around, God, turn it around.
Are we good? Yep. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to West Main Turn Around Ministries, Church of the Nazarene. This morning, we have a beautiful day out there today. It's going to be in the 60s. What a great day it's going to be. A beautiful day. This is just a great day the Lord has made for us. And again, I want to welcome everybody here this morning. And we're going to open up with uh, testimonies. I know everybody here has something to say that God is doing in your life, whether it's a, a trial, that you're in the valley struggling, or whether you're on top of the mountaintop, right? Amen? Amen. 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 Anybody? I just want to say I love the Lord, and I'm glad to be here, and I thank you for taking care of me every day. All right. Dale? I got to praise the Lord just, just for the opportunity to be and the privilege to be here at his house. Amen. Just, you know, he's got me through this week. He's blessed me every day. And I've had a couple stumbles. You know, nothing critical. But just set up a, you know, somebody trying to trip me up. Right. Just to see how I'm going to react, what I'm going to say, how I'm going to say it. Good Lord has blessed me. I got my tongue. I kept, <laughs> kept quiet. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and, and if anybody that ever talks knows, hold the tongue is not an easy thing to do. This ain't that the truth. <laughs> Amen, brother. But I got praise the good Lord for that, and, and thank you for all his blessings. All right. Amen. Anybody else? For a genie of dying, send him. All right. Anyone else? Anyone else want to thank the Lord for anything he's done for him? Uh, just say yes, amen. Amen. I just want amen. to thank the Lord for uh, having the privilege to be here today and uh, to uh, bring his word to his people. I just pray that uh, he anoints this message today, that uh, it goes out to people who are sitting at home and it really sinks into their heart. Today's going to be a, a kind of lengthy service, but you know what? The message has to be spoken. I'll let you go home at least by 4 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a break for lunch. Yeah, I was going to say you're serving lunch. Yes, we are. <laughs> well, we haven't. <laughs> but anyway, you know... Lunch time already. I was having a conversation with a person this week. I just want to share that with you, a testimony of what God laid on my mind after the, the uh, conversation. It was a good conversation. It was a question about different things in life, with different lifestyles. Uh, should we accept them? Should we condemn them? Should we uh, embrace them? Should we, of course, we would love the person. We hate the sin. But the point of the question, to answer the question, the Lord gave me the answer to the question is a question. To all of those questions that was asked, the question that should be asked back is, have you not read the scriptures? There's your answer to your question. And once you read the scripture, you have to pray that the Holy Spirit will give you discernment to understand the answer to the question. Otherwise, you're just reading a bunch of words. Have God open the door, turn on the light in your head, and realize this is what he expects of us. So, when you get into a conversation, and it's a question of questions, your question for the answer should be a question, have you not read the scriptures? Amen. 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 That's a good one. That was the, that, I pray about that conversation. The Lord says, this is the answer to the question. It is a question to the answer. Amen. Bit of a tongue twister there. Some would say it's an oxymoron, but I'd say it's the answer to the question. Now today's devotional. Oh. Yes. 
Reminder, next Saturday night, spring for one hour. Well, just remember, next week we're going to we're going to spring forward on the time. Amen. 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 Today is March the third. Now this, I read this several times, and uh, when we listen to the noise of the world, sometimes it can drown out the spiritual speaking of the Holy Spirit. We need to be focused on what we're listening to in our heads. The Lord says, I love you for who you are. Not for who you think you might need to be, but I love you for who you are and the way you are. And you can't clean up yourself. None of us can. We have to come before God, turn it over to Him, and let Him allow Him to clean us up. Allow Him to do the work. He says, I love you for who you are, not for what you do. Many voices, they strive to control your mind, especially when you sit in silence. Have you ever noticed when you, everything's really quiet, and you're trying to focus on having a conversation with the Lord, no matter where you are? You can be right here in church. And Satan's trying to get in your head and turn things around. But you need to press on, pass forward that. Say, Lord, take this out of my head. I don't want to hear that. Like I said, the Lord loves you for who you are, not what you do. Many voices strive to control your mind, especially when you sit in silence. You must learn to discern what is my voice, the Lord says, and what is not. Ask my Holy Spirit to give you this discernment so we can determine which voice is in our head, whether it's the Lord or whether it's the devil. Many of my children run around in circles trying to obey various voices directing their lives. This results in fragmented, frustrating patterns of living. Do not fall into this trap. Instead, walk closely with me in each moment of your life, listening for my directives and enjoying my companionship. Refuse to let others direct you and tie you up in knots. My sheep know my voice and follow me wherever I lead. Amen. Amen. And that reminds me, we all have uh, principles and guidelines that we stand on. And we stand on God's word as those are our principles. This is how we live. But there will be times when groups of friends or just people you're talking to trying to convince you to compromise your principles that you stand on. And if we listen long enough and dwell long enough with them, we will compromise our principles. So we have to be very attentive to where we are, who we're with, and how long we dwell. If the Lord puts you in a place, He's going to protect you because He has you there as a witness. But sometimes your own family can cause you to compromise your principles. It's what you believe in and what you stand on. And we need to be strong in that so that our principles are not compromised. That we, and people will respect you more if you stand on what you believe in than giving in to what they want you to do. Amen? Amen. Now we're going to have our music, uh, a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this morning. We just, we ask, Lord, for anointing on the message, the music. Lord, those of us who are here in this building and those who are watching us on this video, um, 
Lord, we just ask that the message touches each one of us in our hearts, guides us, opens up our ears and our eyes, Lord, to hear the message, to understand what you're telling us through your word. So we just ask for that blessing and that anointing today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. These songs are not our songs. We've not written them. But we're thankful for those who have and give us the privilege of being able to praise you, bring glory to you in the kingdom. Amen? Amen. Amen.
like I said before, did you consult God before you made this decision to do what it is you're going to do? Uh, does that mean that we're not going to be put through a trial? No. Maybe that's where we learn our lesson. And we reflect and go back and say, this time, I'm going to consult my Lord before I make this decision. This time, I'm going to wait for the answer. The Lord says, Mary, be still and know that I am God. Amen? Amen. 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 So we do need to confide in the Word and we need to confide in God through prayer and supplication to give us guidance, give us strength. Because we cannot do this on our own. None of us can. We could be here every single Sunday, every single day with doors open. But if we are not communicating with the Lord on a daily basis, it's going to be harder than what it is and what it needs to be. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, Wes. In the eye of the storm, you remain in control. And in the middle of the war, you guard my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm.
Heavenly Father, Lord, we come today as we pass out these flyers for the community. Father, we pray your blessings to encourage those who receive these to come to the Easter egg hunt, Lord, and come to the Easter dinner, Lord, that we're going to be putting on for the community. All is welcome. Uh, we just pray that everyone come and uh, have a blessed day. Amen. Okay. And our Easter egg hunt now is Friday, February 16th, and it is March the 23rd. March the 23rd. You better sit back. It's from 1 to 2. And then our Easter meal is on the 31st. And it's right after service, which will be about, I think we said 12. Yeah. And yeah. so whenever. So the community is welcome to that too. So, okay, everybody, ready? Let's go. He tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tell.
in the book of Luke, chapter 6, if you need to find it. These are the Beatitudes of the Lord speaking. These are things that we should be listening to, things that we should really research and come to understand what is God, what is Jesus really saying here? This is all the red letters. And you think about it, the, the questions, there are things that we need to think about, things that we should be putting in place in our lives on a daily basis. And that's for all of us. I'm going to start at 37. We left off there last week. Everybody have your place? Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Now some would say that in this particular thing here, this verse, when you tell them the truth of the Word of God, they'll say, you're judging me. No, I'm giving you information. What you do with that information is up to you. You ask me a question about what's going on in your life. And this is what the Lord says. This isn't what Jim says. So in that, we're not judging them. We're giving them information. You need to think about that when someone says, well, you're judging me. You're telling me how to live. I'm not. You, you know, when you engage the conversation... And I'm just telling you what God says. It isn't what Jim says. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put in your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will also be measured back to you. You think about that. You know, God puts that ability in your heart to give. And when you give to someone, you shouldn't expect anything in return because God is the one that's going to bless you for your giving. And nobody can bless you like God can when it comes to that. So when you give to somebody, give humbly, asking nothing in return, and God will bless that. But if you give grievously and say, well, I expect something in return for that, God is not going to bless that, nor is he going to honor it. And he spoke the parable to them, can the blind lead the blind? Will they not both fall into the ditch? So what is he saying there? If we are blind spiritually, how can we lead somebody else? It's not going to happen. In the psalm, it tells us we're blind, but now we see. An amazing grace. <coughs> and he says, uh, Disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his teacher. I'll use this as an analogy. I've trained a lot of young men in my trade as an electrician, and my hope for them is that they become better than me. And I think in this, when we are helping someone along spiritually, we want them to exceed us. We want them to go much further than we have. So when we're gone, they can carry on with what they've been 
trained at. Same thing in anything you do in life. But your teacher should always expect you, higher expectations for you than what that person is. So when we're taught, Jesus is teaching us, I believe here he's telling us, but everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his teacher. We can be like Jesus. We'll, I don't want to use the word perfect, but we'll be as perfect as we can be here on earth. We will be perfected in Christ through the Holy Spirit. In verse 41, here again, comes down to the judgment that we started at the beginning. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the plank that's in your own eye? So don't be judging another brother when what you can't even know the plank that's in your eyeball. He's got just the speck of dust in his. So we have to realize where we are spiritually. And I think I said earlier to my wife, I said, you know, a lot of times as Christians, we shoot our wounded and leave them for dead. Instead of reaching out and helping a fellow believer, we condemn them. You know, instead of encouraging them and lifting them up in prayer and edifying them with good encouragement, we shoot them down. You know, we'll push them off to the side. We'll still get another person that we can bring in. But we need to treat our wounded. Because there are many people who are wounded in our church who are children of God. And sometimes... We just think to ourselves, well, you know better. Well, do we? We all know better. But that doesn't mean we do better. So when someone's hurting or they made a mistake, it's not up to us to beat them up. It's up to us to lift them up. Lift them up first in prayer. Not in gossip. Prayer. God, what should we do to help this person? Get that person and bring them forward. Pray with them. Sincerely. Because you don't know what they've been through. You don't know what they're walking through right now. Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck that is in your eye when you yourself do not see the plank that is in your own eye? And he calls him a hypocrite. First, remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck that is in your brother's eye. Amen. So first of all, we need to make sure that we're spiritually right. And the only way we're going to know that is through prayer and having the Holy Spirit speak to us to guide us for that person. Sometimes God's taking care of that person and we're over there so much on them, it discourages them. There's nothing worse than being attacked verbally by someone that loves you or someone that you feel is your friend. Because that can really tear you down. So just remember that. For a good tree does not veer does not bear bad fruit, nor does the bad tree bear good fruit. So if you're good, in the eyes of God, you're going to bear good fruit. In other words, you're going to do good things, and it will be an example to others. And we, when we see a bad tree, a rotten tree, it's not going to bear good fruit. It's just withering and dying. Everything they do is going to be bad. 
And I would say in that case that we need to be there for them as well. We need to lift them up. For everything that falls out of our mouth can destroy a person's life. Whether it's true or not is beside the point. The point is, the Lord tells us, lift them up, edify them. Every word that comes out of your mouth should be an edification, lifting someone up. Not putting them down so it makes you feel better. Because we're not above anybody. We're all on the same playing field. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they gather grapes from bramble bush. You can't go to something that's not what it is and gather something good from it. A good man, out of the good treasures of his heart, brings forth good. God instills the goodness and the grace and the, the kindness and generosity in our hearts. Because in ourselves, we're very selfish. We're self-serving. But God gives us that love for other people to want to help them, lift them up, and put them in the right path. Now the evil man, out of the evil of the treasures of his heart, brings forth the evilness. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. The good person brings forth good things, says good things, true things that they really feel. An evil man is deceiving and speaks of deceit and selfishness. But why do you call me, now listen to this, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say? Why, why would you do that? And it says, Jesus is my Lord, but I'm going to do what I want to do. But then he's not our Lord. He's not the one who's in, in our lives. We're only talking it, but not walking it. Why do you call me your Lord when you do nothing that I say? You do what you want, when you want. Basically, we insult him, we slap him in the face, when we claim to the world that we're walking with the Lord, and we're doing nothing but living in the world. And that's not to say that we're not going to make a mistake. We are. But there are those who claim it, but aren't even living it in any measure. Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you whom he is like. Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you whom he is like. As we follow God's word, he's telling us right here. You are like me. You are like Jesus. You are the way, the truth, and the life that we should live. The way we should go. The life we should live. He is like a man building a house who digs deep and lay the foundation on the rock. And when the flood comes and the steam beats against the house, it could not shake it, for it was founded on solid rock. And that's where we need to build our faith. We need to stand solid on it. We're going to be shaken probably, but we won't fall. Because we are grounded in Christ through His Holy Spirit. And we have to believe that for it to happen. We have to know that for it to happen. Forty nine says, But he who heard and did nothing is like the man who built a house on 
on the earth without foundation, against which the streams beat fervently, and immediately it fell. And the ruin of that house was great. Our church is the same way. We have to stand on God's word and really be grounded in it and believe it. Believe that's what I believe. Not when we just hear in church, but when we're out there. We have to still believe what we believe. Because it's like the world coming against us. If we're not grounded, we will be like this house. When they beat against us, we will fall and ruin. Think about that for a minute. So we have to stand strong and continue to believe. And when someone tries to come against us to discourage us, we have to call on Jesus and say, Lord, I need your strength. Because we ain't going to be able to stand against them on our own. We can't stand against the storm if we're not truly grounded in Christ. Chapter 7, or verse 7. Chapter 7, verse 1. Now when he concluded all his sayings and hearing of the people who went to Capernaum, a certain, I want you to hear this particular scripture here because it really speaks volumes of faith. This was a centurion soldier, a commander in the Roman army. Now, those of you who know Roman history, they were very violent people, the soldiers were. They killed at an instant. And this man commanded those men. He was a leader, a commander, a, a lord to them, as you might speak. And a certain centurion, centurion's servant, in other words, this major, this commander's servant was very ill, okay, who was dear to him, was sick and ready to die. So when he heard about Jesus, he sent elders of the Jews to him, pleading with him to come and heal his servant. Now here's a man, I don't know what his faith was, but he believed in Christ. He believed in the ability and the power. And when they came to Jesus, they begged him earnestly, saying that the one from whom he should do for this is very deserving of this healing. For he loves our nation and has built us a synagogue. Then Jesus went with them and when he was already not far from the house, the centurion, they hear, hear this now, the centurion sent friends to him because he felt that he wasn't worthy to stand in Jesus' presence because he knew what he did for a living. He knew his sins, what he had done to other people. You got to put that into play. The centurion sent friends to him, saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I, for I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. So he recognized the fact that he wasn't worthy to be even standing in Jesus' presence, but yet he believed that he had the ability and the power and the compassion to heal this man's servant. Therefore, I did not even think myself worthy to come to you, but say the word, and my servant will be healed. So he knew all Jesus had to do was speak the word, from no matter where he was in the world, and it would happen. For I also am a man placed under authority. Jesus has authority. This man had authority over men of 
legions of men, thousands, have authority, soldiers of soldiers under me. And I say to the one to go, and he goes, and to the other he comes. He doesn't even have to be in the presence of that legion. He just sends out a command, and that command is taken to the legion. And those soldiers act on his command. He's not even there. So he knew the authority of Jesus had and the power he had. The power of what God could do. So there it is. You know, and when Jesus heard these things, he marveled. Now here you have the son of the living God who has marveled over this commander. He's so impressed with him, of his faith. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned around and said to the crowd that followed him, I say, this is Jesus speaking, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Israel is a Jewish nation. Here we have a Roman soldier who had more faith and belief in the Son of God than Israel. And this is Jesus saying this. And those who were sent returning to the house found the servant well who had been sick. So Jesus just spoke the words and it happened. But you have to put into play here, even in our prayers, he does not have to be present. But he can speak the word. God just speaks the word and it happens. He can just think it and you're healed. I guess what I'm saying here today is we have to have the faith to believe. That God is able. No matter what the world tells you, no matter what you hear out there, in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, you know you can stand on His Word and it's the truth. No matter what's going on in your life, it seems like it's a rat's mess. Nothing's ever going to be right. But God will make whatever's going on right for you. In time. But we have to be patient and wait in his time, not ours. <clears throat> Amen? Amen? Now we're going to uh, take our offering. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to you today. We thank you for your message. I will pray that it's instilled in our hearts and our minds, Lord. Let us ponder the things that were spoke. If need be, let us go home, read our Bible, pray to you, Lord, to give us discernment.
From all of us at Parkview Health. Sending warm wishes for a happy, healthy holiday season. Thank you. 
Community Radio 95.7 FM WELT is interrupting our regular programming for this special feature. Today, community and public radio stations across America will come together in a simultaneous broadcast of John Lennon's timeless song of peace, unity, and hope. Give peace a chance. This collective transmission serves to unite radio listeners from coast to coast in a unified demonstration to support those around the world who are affected by war. Reminding us all that we can collectively amplify support for peace across the globe. Community and public radio together for peace. This is Community Radio 95.7 FM, WELT. Two, one, two, three, four.
We now return you to your regular programming here on Community Radio, 95.7 FM, WELT. All right. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come today as we pass out these flyers for the community. Father, we pray your blessings to encourage those who receive these to come to the Easter egg hunt, Lord, and come to the Easter dinner, Lord, that we're going to be putting on for the community. All is welcome. Uh, we just pray that everyone will come and uh, we'll have a nice day. Amen. Okay. And our Easter egg hunt now is April, no, March, March the 23rd. March the 23rd. You better sit up. It's from 1 to 2. It's from 1 to 2. And then our Easter meal is on the 31st. And it's right after service, which will be about, I think we said 12, yeah. and yeah. so whenever. So the community is welcome to that, too. So, okay, everybody, ready? Let's go. Tells me I am his
nothing cannot compare to the glory of your love. There is no shadow in your presence. No mortal man would dare to stand before your throne. Before the Holy One of Heaven, it's only by Your blood, and it's only through Your mercy.
song for the day. These are not our songs. We have not written them. But we thank God for those who have and give us the privilege and the honor to bring glory to God. Amen. 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 <laughs> I did say it earlier. <laughs> Didn't I? Yeah, you did. I heard it. <laughs> that was, we, we men stick together. That's all. <laughs> oh, praise God. Let's have some fun, right? Give yeah. glory to God. Amen. 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 All right. Crank it up a little bit there, buddy. You are my joy, you are my song, you are the world that I am drawing from, you are my
Even though they may curse us, say bad things about us, hurt us, love your enemy. Pray for him. Mm -hmm. well, what good does it do to love someone that loves you back? What merit does it do? Anyone can do that. God tells us. What merit does it give to give to someone who will give back to you? That merit does nothing. We should give our love to those who hate us. We should pray for them. Those who hurt us, we should pray for them. That, in God's eyes, gives us merit. But we pray for them through the eyes and the heart of Christ and not through the eyes of the world. Look at them and beat them down. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your message today. We pray, Lord, that your word sticks in our heart, in our souls, in our minds. And in times like that, Lord, that we are dealing with someone, the evilness, that, Lord, your spirit will speak to our hearts and our minds and gives us the words to say and the attitude to have at that time. For, Lord, in ourselves, we don't want to react in a worldly way. But through your spirit, Lord, we will act in a godly way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm feeling good, good, good in a crazy way. God's love changed me more than I can say. Can't keep this in, gotta let it out. Gonna tell the whole world that your love is spinning me round and round. Yeah, it's turning me upside down. I can't believe the way you love me more than I can contain. I'm gonna turn around and give, give, give it away. Back up. The more we get together